So I think what we've done here is unprecedented. The whole repair effort from designing the shaft, constructing the shaft, bringing in the heavy left equipment, all the technical experts that came to uh, participate in the repair process has been a, a monumental effort. My name is Chris Dixon. I'm project manager with Seattle Tunnel Partners. I have overall responsibility for uh, the design and construction of the SR99 tunnel project. We got the machine to the surface. We knew the outer seals were damaged, and that's what necessitated this repair process. The Tachi Sozin designed the TBF. They manufactured a new bearing block, a new outer seal ring, a new seal system that is much more accessible in the event we need to access it for maintenance or repair. We also found some other things that we wanted to address and correct once we disassembled the machine. The center pipe had damage. We replaced that. There's blue drive motors and pinions on the ends of those motors, and we uh, saw some damage to the pinions, so we had those replaced. Also, it was a very good opportunity to make some changes in the cutting tools configuration so that the cutter head performs more efficiently during the balance of the tunnel drive. And we needed to add steel reinforcing plates to add additional reinforcement to the TBF. It took us about 14 hours to lower the cutter head and cutter drive unit back into the shaft once the repairs were complete. Now that we've lowered the front end of the TBM into the shaft, we're reconnecting everything that was disconnected to allow that 2,000 ton piece of equipment to be brought to the surface. There's a lot of hoses, wires, cables that need to be reconnected. And there's a very extensive welding process. When we removed those three front shield pieces, we had to cut them out of the front shield and now that we've reinstalled those we need to re-weld all of those front shield pieces in place. We've talked about the reinforcing steel plates. We still have some welding to do on those. Once everything's reassembled we're going to measure everything to make sure it's exactly in the place that it needs to be. And then we're going to do what we call a no-load test. This is testing Everything that's been reconnected to make sure everything's going where it needs to go in the TBM. It's also going to involve having all the moving parts move and make sure that we've got the right tolerances and clearances for the machine to operate properly. Then we backfill the shaft up to about four feet above the TBM with sand. Then we'll backfill the remainder with the material that we removed from the shaft when we excavated it. We've got wells there that we need to turn off. There's dewatering wells through the bottom of the shaft. As we backfill the shaft, we'll incrementally turn off those wells, and we're gonna be monitoring all of that to make sure that everything's stable. Then we run those same tests we did before under what we call a load test, because now the machine is surrounded by soil and water. And then we're gonna proceed very slowly for the 430 feet up to a place where we've treated the ground, where we can stop and do whatever work is necessary before we resume tunneling. We've had a lot of extremely talented and experienced people involved in this repair effort. So I'm looking forward to getting through this next phase and uh, resuming the tunneling and successfully completing the tunnel drive.